Hey guys, CSS media queries are an important part of responsive web design, but sometimes they don't work as we expect or they don't work at all. So in this video, I will show five common mistakes that developers make while using media queries and also suggest you guys solutions for that. So let's get started. Before we begin, let me shortly explain what media queries are. So media queries are basically a special type of CSS keyword which are being used to adapt the necessary styling rules for any kind of device like mobile phones, tablets, and many others as well. If you need to learn more details about media queries, check out my other video from the card above. Now, the first common mistake is that people forget to add, or maybe even aren't aware of it, which is the meta viewport tag. So let me explain what it is and what happens when we forget to add it. Now, here are my media queries. And what I expect is that when I switch this website view to a device smaller than 480 pixels, the container size is currently 80%, but it should be take the full width of the page. So let's try. So a mobile device, Galaxy S9, is chosen, but as we see, the rules haven't applied and my media queries aren't working because I haven't defined a special meta tag called viewport. So what is this viewport? Viewport is the most possible visible area of a web page. And since devices like mobile phones or tablets have different sizes of screen, then the viewport of each device is also different. And when there is no viewport defined, then the browser tries to fit the whole web page of a desktop inside a smaller device like this. So that's why our web page looks very small here and media queries doesn't work. So to fix this, we need to add one single line of code to the head of our main HTML file, which is this one. And let me explain it shortly. So this is our meta tag with a name called viewport. And here inside the content attribute, it has two variables defined. The first one is that it should set the width size of the page to the actual device width. And the second one is the initial scale, means that the initial zoom level when the page is first loaded by the browser. Now let's save it and try it again. And as we can see, this time it is working without any problems. Now the second common mistake is using this CSS important rule. For example, let's say that I would like to add an important tag here. And what happened now is that even if our media queries try to increase the width size, it's always going to be overwritten by this important tag and set and will set back to 80%. So if anywhere of your CSS code is using the important tag, this will overwrite your media queries. So you should get rid of it. The same problem happens when people use inline styling and inline styling means that the CSS rules defined at your HTML code. For example, let's define here an inline style and add a width attribute of 80%. Now, when I save this, we see that the inline style is going to overwrite our media queries. So that's why you should also avoid inline styles at your code. Another common mistake that people do is the wrong placement of the media queries. Now, the thing is that your media query rules should always be defined at the end of your CSS files. If I copy this, for example, to the top and save it, then we see that it's not working because the browser reads your code from top to down. And if you define your media queries at the top of your file, then it's going to be overwritten later. So that's why you should always add your media query rules at the end of your CSS files. Another common mistake is the incorrect definition of media queries. Now, this is the correct syntax of the media query definition. It should start with the add media rule. The second one will be the media type. We should be followed with the and or sometimes with the or keywords. And inside the parenthesis should be the feature. Mistake number five is actually one of the most asked questions of media queries, which is that what happens when you change the orientation of this mobile devices from portrait to landscape, for example. And for that, there is also another special media query rule, which is the orientation definition. So let's say, for example, I want to change the background colors, but only on the landscape mode. So let's try this. 
again with the end keyword I can define here the orientation as the landscape mode and when we are on landscape and then let's say I'm going to add a background color of yellow let's try it and it didn't work why is that because I forgot to change the maximum width it's currently 740 so let's make it 760 try it again and as we see now the background color has changed to yellow and if I change it back to the portrait mode then it's back at gray and let's try one more time landscape mode and it's yellow again so it is working so this is how we can apply different rules for the landscape and portrait orientation of our mobile devices so these are the five common problems and mistakes that developers do when using media queries if you have seen or know any other problems with media queries let me know in the comment section if you find this video helpful please hit the like button and thank you guys for watching